In this video, we're going to talk about bubble sort. And um, bubble sort is one of, the, I think, the most popular sorting algorithm that I can, that I can think of. And but it's it's widely known for being inefficient. And so I'm going to show you what bubble sort is before we talk about merge sort, which is a divide and conquer algorithm. And I'm going to show you with this this uh, five element example. And so the goal here is that we have five elements in this list, five numbers in this list, and I want to sort them in ascending order. There are three, one, five, two, four right now. I want one, two, three, four, five. And bubble sort is going to get me that answer, but it's going to do it in a very slow way. And so what happens is that we're going to talk about the first iteration of bubble sort. And remember, we're zero indexing things. And so we start with zero all the way up to four. And first, what we're going to do is we're going to set a pointer, right, which is going to be I, and it's going to point to the first element. And then we're going to set another pointer, J, and it's going to point to the last element. And what we do is we, we work J down, like we iterate, we iterate, we iterate J down until we get right to the element that the is right in front of I. And so we stop J right here. And now this is what we do is that wherever J is, we're going to compare A of J with A of J minus one, the index right before it. Now, if A of J is less than A of J minus one, then we're going to swap them. And you can think of it this way. If we want to sort this list in ascending order, and a of j is actually less than this, then the, we know that these two numbers are out of order. But in this case, you know, two and four, uh, four is actually greater than than two, and they're they're in ascending order, and so we don't have to really do anything. There's no swapping, and so the array when j is equal to four is going to uh, look like this. It's going to actually stay the same, right? And I'm going to write the array. And so what we do afterwards is we move J to three. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna delete J and delete our pointer. And then we're gonna move J down to three. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say, is A of J less than A of J minus one? And the answer is yes. So now we actually need to do some swapping. And so we need to swap where a of j uh, a of j with a of j minus one because they're out of order. We want ascending order, and these are obviously not in ascending order. And so we swap them, and then we're left with three, one, two, five, and four. We swapped a j and a j minus one. Awesome. And then we iterate down. And so we get down here where a of j is equal to uh, two. And I'm going to go down here to show this, but we have a of j is equal to two, right? And you know i is still equal here, i is still here. And what we do is we realize, okay, we see is a of j great, uh, less than a of j minus one? And that is, uh, that, that is uh, not the case, sorry. That is not the case. This is in sorted order, so we don't do anything. And so j equal to two, when j is equal to two, well, we just terminate what we had at j is equal to three. And so this is what we have. And then we move j, um, and then at, that, at this point, we move j to uh, right here, and this is i. And then we say, okay, is a of j less than a of j minus one? And that is the truth, they are out of order. And so at this point, what happens is when j is equal to one, we, when that terminates, we are left with this array, one, three, two, five, and four. Awesome. And at this point, we are done because we, we terminate with J right here, right? Right in front of I. It doesn't go to I, but it terminates right in front of I. And then now we move the counter I. And this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna give myself some more real estate, keeping uh, this, this, array in, this array in mind right here is that what we do is now we move to i is equal to one. When we move to i is equal to one, uh, this is what the array originally looks like. I'm gonna write it out. I'm just gonna carry this down. It's gonna start off like this. One, three, two, five, four. Two, three, four. Okay, and then i is right here. 
and then we start with j all the way down here and we do the exact same thing and so we compare aj with aj minus one and if aj is less than aj minus one then we swap it and so when we have j is equal to um zero one two three four in this case when that terminates sorry when that terminates we are left with one three two these two at the end get swapped okay awesome and then we move on to j is equal to three give myself a little bit more real estate and you see the pattern here is that we have i here we have j is here and then we say is aj less than aj minus one it's not and so when j is equal to three we're left with the same array nothing special here but if you're probably seeing on the next iteration we're gonna have to make some changes and so when j is equal to two right what happens is is i is here and then j is here and we're actually going to stop at this point and just do this are going to be our last comparison and we're going to say okay is j of j less less than a of j minus one and that is the case these are out of order right here and then we swap them and then we're left with a with one two three four and five and this array is already in sorted order, and so there's really no need to carry on, um, even though the algorithm would carry on, uh, unless you wrote something to stop it. But what happens is, is okay, now if we were to continue going, when i is equal to, um, you know, when i goes from 1 to 2, is that i would be here, and then we'd start j here, and then we'd go down, but we wouldn't make any changes because everything's in sorted order. And the, the thing about bubble sort is that you can now sort of see that every time after when i increments when when i goes from i minus one to i what happens is that everything behind i after we change it is in sorted order and if we can if we can assume that right i would i would encourage you to prove that that is the case but if we can assume that then a pretty easy proof kind of comes out from this